So in the third part of lecture three, we will talk about a new problem called mean cut. So in the input of this problem, we have a graph G, which is connected and undirected. We define the cut in the graph G to be a set of edges such that if we remove the edges, then the graph will become disconnected. So below we have an example. So let's say this is the original graph G. So we can see that between any pair of vertices, there is a way to traverse from one vertex to the other using the edges. But on the other hand, if we remove all the red edges, then the graph becomes disconnected. So in that case, you, you see that there is one connected component here, there is another, and there is another. So there is no way to reach from this node to this node. For mean cut problem, our target is to find the cuts in the graph such that it has the fewest number of edges. We let n to, to, to be the number of nodes in the graph and let m to be the number of edges in the graph. To solve this problem, we can actually rely on max flow because there is a, a well-known uh, theorem called max flow mean cut theorem. By running multiple times of max flow, each on a pair of uh, distinct vertices, then we can find the mean cut of the graph in this time, order of mn cube time. But we can have a better algorithm, and it runs in mn plus n square log n time. So in other words, mean cut problem is not a very hard problem. It can be solved in polynomial time. But today, we will look at a randomized approach. So this problem can also be solved by using randomization. So our randomized algorithm is very simple. We are going to apply an operation called edge contraction. I will define what it is soon. But let's say there is a, a certain operation called edge contraction. So this algorithm runs by starting with G and then by performing the edge contraction again and again, the number of nodes in the graph G will be, uh, dec will, be, will, will be reduced. So each time after one edge contraction, we will have one fewer node in G. So this algorithm works like, as long as the graph G contains more than two nodes, we are going to pick a random edge and then contract this edge. After contraction, we have one fewer node, so we apply again and again. So in the end, when we output, uh, or when we exit this while loop, the graph will have exactly two nodes, and at that time, we will output all the remaining edges in the graph G. So what is meant by edge contraction? <clears throat> so here, let's take a look at this example. So this is the original graph G, and we look at this gray edge. So in the first step here, that we are going to apply contraction, we are going to contract the so-called gray edge. What happens is that we will make the, the, the endpoints of the contracted edge merge together into one node. So we are going to put this node and this node together into one node. So in that case, it, the graph becomes something like this. And now let us take a look of the next step. The next step, we are going to contract the red edge. So in that case, we are going to move this node and this node together, combine them together. So when we combine them together, then this pink edge originally linked to this one is the same as this pink edge linked to this one. So you now see this is what happens. And let's do one more step. Suppose now we are going to contract the blue edge. So when we contract the blue edge, so this now becomes merged together here. So in that case, we will see that from this node there was a green edge, but now we can, after the combining of these two nodes into one, so there will be a green edge joining to this one. So in this sense, we will see that between two nodes, there could be multiple number of edges. Let's do one more step. This time we are going to contract the black edge. So when we contract the black edge, this orange edge moves to this one. So in that case, this will be the resulting graph. 
where we have exactly two nodes. At this point, we will exit the while loop, and then we will output the remaining edges, which is the green one, the pink one, and the orange one. Now, if we go back to the original graph, let's take a look. What happens if we remove these three edges, the orange one, the pink one, and the green one? The orange one, the pink one, and the green one. So we will remove this one, this one, this one. And we will see that after the removal, the graph is actually disconnected. It is fairly easy to see why this is true. Because after the, after the removal of these edges, this node here, which may represent some other nodes contracted and, uh, and merged together, and this other node, which represents some other nodes merged together due to the contraction. Now, we will see that this group of nodes and this group of nodes in the original graph will be disconnected after the removal of the three edges. Okay, so these are some facts about this algorithm. We, see, we have seen that each edge contraction removes exactly one node. And the final edges that we are going to output will form a cut. Now, this may not be a mean cut, but it is a cut. Now, for a certain mean cut C, we see that if none of the edges of C are contracted, then what does that mean? All the edges will remain until the end. So that means that the final edges will contain all the edges of this mean cut C. But then we cannot have more edges of this mean cut C because this after the removal of, of, of C, C is a mean cut, right? It should disconnect the graph. So in the final answer, let's say in the final answer, if all the edges of C are present, there cannot be some other edge of C. So what does that mean? So the probability of the algorithm to be correct will be at least the probability of all the edges of C are not contracted. The reason is that in such a case, the mean cut C that we, we see will be output as the result. So how to bound or how to analyze this so-called probability of edges of C are not contracted? To help our analysis, let us define EJ to be the event that we do not contract an edge of C at round J. Now in such a case, the probability that edges of C are not contracted is the same as the probability of E1, no edge of C contracted in the round 1, and E2, no edge contracted in round 2, and so on and so forth until the last round. Which is e, uh, which is round n minus two. So we have the event e n minus two here. This probability can be written as a product of a bunch of conditional probability like this. We have done this before. So this is probability of e one. This is probability of e two given e one. This is probability of e three given e one and e two, and so on and so forth. To help further of our analysis, let us play the role of a god. So although we do not know the mean cut c, but there must be some mean cut c exists. So in that case, we let k to, to be the number of edges of such a mean cut. Now we see that at the beginning of round j, the degree of any node has to be greater than or equal to k. Because if it is not the case, then what does that mean? It means that we just remove the, the edges connecting to a certain node with small degree, and then we, we disconnect the graph, then this will be a better cut than the mean cut, so it is impossible. So the degree of any node will be greater than or equal to k, so the number of edges in the graph g at the beginning of that round, round j, right, will be greater than or equal to this one, because the graph will have these many number of nodes, and each node has degree k, and this represents the handshaking lemma. So the total degree divided by 2 would be the, the, the bound for the number of edges. Okay, so, so now what do we have? So probability of E1, which is the case that we do not contract the edge of a certain mean cut C in the first round, so what is this chance? 
The chance that we are unlucky to pick an edge is there are only k edges in the Minka C, but there are so many edges, n k over 2 or more, in the original graph. So the chance of picking those edges will be, will be small. And in that case, the chance of picking the other edges, not the edge in C, will be very large, larger than or equal to 1 minus this probability. And, and after simplification, this is equal to n minus 2 divided by n. Now similarly, we can go on with the same reasoning so that the probability of E2 given E1 will be at least greater than, so at least n minus 3 this term divided by n minus 1, and so on and so forth. So the last term here, the probability that in the last round, we do not find an edge of C2 contract, given that all the previous rounds are okay, yeah, we do not do anything wrong, will be greater than or equal to 1 over 3. So if we multiply all of them together, this will be a bound on the probability of no edges of C are contracted, which is greater than or equal to 2 divided by n times n minus 1. Yeah, to see why this is true, you will see that there are many terms here that we can cancel. So, so here n minus 3 over n minus 1. The next term will be n minus 4 divided by n minus 2. That n minus 4, uh, n minus 4 divided by n minus 2, n minus 2 term there can be cancelled with this n minus 2. So in, in the end, you, you will see that only the first two terms in the denominator cannot be cancelled, and only the last two terms in the numerator cannot be cancelled. So that's why we get 2 divided by n times n minus 1. Okay, so this is the, the, the full description or the, uh, and also the analysis of the randomized algorithm. Thank you.